As we know, Omar Mateen was twice investigated by the FBI, and uh, they decided that they didn't need to watch him any further. So what is the criteria for putting somebody on the FBI watch list? Channel 4's Scott Johnson's covering that part of the story. And Scott, you talked to a former FBI agent who gave us some insight. I did, Bruce. This is going to become a complex issue. Today, Hillary Clinton saying if she's elected president, she will get a task force to start looking at these lone wolf terrorists because he's someone being described as that. The fact that Omar Mateen was on a terror watch list until around two years ago and bought guns around two weeks ago is concerning a lot of people. But like a lot of police investigations, when the FBI determines they have no evidence to keep someone, they drop their case. We now know Omar Mateen was interviewed by the FBI twice, in 2013 and 2014, about potential ties to terrorism, and even at one point put on a terrorism watch list. Channel 4's Chris Parento also reported that Mateen made social media posts following September 11th that were anti-American statements and seemed unsympathetic about the loss of life. Today, FBI Director James Comey addressed this, saying they first learned about Mateen from a co-worker. First, he claimed family connections to Al-Qaeda. He also said that he was a member of Hezbollah, which is a Shia terrorist organization that is a bitter enemy of the so-called Islamic State, ISIL. He said he hoped that law enforcement would raid his apartment and assault his wife and child so that he could martyr himself. He eventually told the FBI that he said that out of anger because co-workers were making fun of him for being a Muslim. And then two months later, he popped up on federal investigators' radar again for attending the same mosque as a Florida man who conducted a suicide bombing for ISIS in Syria. But investigators say in the end they couldn't pin anything on him and they say the link was minimal to the bomber. So he was dropped from the terror watch list completely. Our investigation involved introducing confidential sources to him, recording conversations with him, following him. I met up with Tony Krabbit. She's an ex-assistant special agent in charge of the Jacksonville FBI. I don't know what happened here, but I think it will be examined. She now runs a security company called Confidence. She says there would have been reviews both at the regional level of the FBI and in Washington, D.C. to remove Mateen from the list. And he never did anything to meet the threshold of doing more than possibly following him or monitoring social media. But she says without more evidence, they could not have gotten a court order to tap his phone or hack his email. What's, what's available to the public? you know, could be monitored, may be monitored, if you're going farther than that. And that's the thing, you, you know, you have to, the, the rules and the laws, the guidelines were all put in place to protect citizens' rights. And so you, ha you have to meet certain investigative thresholds before you, the investigation becomes more intrusive. Kravitz also tells me there will likely be multiple internal reviews about what the FBI did and did not do in relation to monitoring a team. One issue that's still unclear is whether the FBI connected his purchase of firearms a couple weeks ago to the fact that he had been previously on a terror watch list. He legally could purchase guns, but no word yet from the Bureau on if that set off any red flags.